So my name is uh, Mario Gaudino. I am professor of uh, cardiothoracic surgery at Wale Cornell Medicine in New York. But uh, today I'm going to present uh, a, a, a trial, a pooled analysis that is actually the result of an international collaboration. And I will be speaking on behalf of the radial investigators. So uh, yes, this is not a randomized trial. So the inclusion criteria will not be at the uh, uh, patient level, but at the trial level. Uh, what we have done, uh, we have uh, 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 created a, a pooled uh, individual patient database of uh, uh, trial that have evaluated the patency rate of uh, the radial artery and the saphenous vein at midterm follow-up. There have been five trials that have been included uh, from um, all around the world. And uh, in 2018, using the same data set, we have published uh, our uh, uh, five-year result on the New England Journal of Medicine. We have shown that the use of the radial artery was associated with a statistical significant reduction of uh, a composite outcome of uh, death, myocardial infarction, and repeat revascularization. However, at five year follow up, there was no difference in uh, survival, and the composite outcome was clearly driven by repeat revascularization. It was unclear uh, 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 to what extent the use of per protocol angiography by uh, uh, the majority of the trial included of, uh, in the analysis may have inflated the uh, uh, risk of uh, uh, repeat revascularization. So, for this, part, for this reason, and because we know that uh, based on the natural history, uh, the uh, uh, failure rate of uh, saphenous vein graph increased exponentially after the five, 50 years of follow-up, we decided to extend the clinical follow-up of patients, including the radial data set to 10 years. And uh, this is actually the uh, presentation that uh, uh, will be given at ACC. So the reason to conduct uh, this study is because uh, we have uh, observational evidence that suggests that the patient who received the radial artery instead of a saphenous vein have a better long-term outcome. However, observational studies are open to bias, and in this case, in particular, to treatment allocation bias, with a surgeon basically using the conduit that is known to have the better patency rate, so the radial artery, in patients with the longest life expectancy. So uh, the only way to uh, 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 evaluate the effect of using the radial artery uh, instead of the saphenous vein is to use a randomized design. Uh, unfortunately, the individual randomized trial that have been performed to compare the two conduits uh, all had angiographic outcome and they were individually underpowered to detect the difference in clinical outcome, which are clearly the most relevant and important outcome. So the only way to address uh, this uh, uh, issue was to pull all the uh, uh, individual trials using a um, meta-analytic approach, and in particular an individual patient data meta-analysis. And uh, uh, that was the rationale to, for the radial project. So the median follow-up time was 10 years. And the key finding was that the use of the radial artery was associated with a statistically significant reduction in uh, cardiac events, including uh, what we typically call uh, uh, ARD clinical events, uh, myocardial infarction and death. And there was also a statistically significant difference in terms of uh, 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 um, overall mortality. So this is very important because it is the first time that uh, uh, we have uh, evidence based on randomized data that the use of uh, multiple arterial graft in coronary artery bypass surgery uh, 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 lead to a survival benefit. This is a question that has been debated for over 30 years. Um, there has been only one randomized trial looking at the question, the ART trial that was uh, neutral. However, at the major methodological issue, 
And so this is the first demonstration of a survival advantage uh, uh, using multiple arterial grafting for bypass surgery that is based on randomized data. Now you have to understand that, that uh, all around the world, almost 90% of the patient uh, who uh, 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 receive bypass surgery, which by the way is the most commonly performed adult cardiac surgery operation. So uh, more than 90% of those patients do not receive multiple arterial graft. They receive only one arterial graft and all the rest is a venous vein. So I think our results should definitely push surgeon to use more arterial grafting, and in particular, the radial artery. I think that our result should push a surgeon to toward a, a, a wider adoption of uh, uh, multiple arterial grafting for bypass surgery, and in particular toward a, a larger use of the radial artery for bypass surgery. I do not think that uh, it should be the default strategy, but for sure, I think a more, a more uh, uh, evidence-based conclusion is that the, radio, the use of the radial artery should be considered in all uh, uh, elective patients undergoing bypass surgery who have a life expectancy of at least five years. Now, there are a few contraindications to the use of the radial artery, both in terms of the anatomy of the target vessel and then the patient characteristics. So I, uh, I, I wouldn't say that the radial artery must be used in everyone because, again, there are possible contraindications. I think a, really a key question now is how to manage the radial artery in patients with coronary artery disease. As you know, the radial artery uh, uh, not only is a conduit for bypass surgery, but also is an access for uh, a transcatheter procedure, both diagnostic catheterization and the PCI. And it has been shown that there is uh, there are important benefit, clinical benefit, uh, when the transradial approach is used instead of the transfemoral approach. Unfortunately, once the radial artery is used for this uh, type of procedure, then it cannot be used for bypass surgery. So it must be a shared decision in a heart team setting of how to manage the radial artery in patients with coronary artery disease. We are lucky in the sense that uh, um, uh, interventional cardiologists typically prefer to use the right radial artery and surgeon for technical reason, typically prefer to use the left radial artery. But more in general, I think that both sides, the cardiologist and the cardiac surgeon, need to be aware of the potential benefit of the radial artery use either as a pro, as a, 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 a uh, 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 entry site for uh, uh, transcatheter procedure and as a bypass conduit. And again, there must be a shared decision between the two on how to approach the conduit in patients with coronary artery disease. There are patients who have contraindication to the radial artery use. Um, in order to harvest the radial artery, must, there must be an intact palmar arch, and uh, there must be a, a, an adequate ulnar compensation to the removal of the radial artery. So uh, not all the patient may have uh, 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 the radial artery safely harvested. Uh, also, there are patients uh, where uh, the, 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 the uh, radial artery is not indicated because of a technical reason, uh, severity of the target vessel stenosis, emergency situation. Uh, uh, so uh, I still there is still a role for the use of the saphenous vein graft. And that's why I do not think we should say everybody should get a radial artery. But patients who, who meet the criteria that have been established to uh, uh, safely and effectively use the radial artery should definitely get the radial artery for capture. This is a very important question because, you know, radial is not the definitive answer to the question. There are limitations, there are at least 
two very important limitations. First of all, it is not a randomized trial. Is it? It is a pooled analysis of small randomized trial. And this clearly opened the door to the possibility of a bias hidden confounders due to the heterogeneity in the surgical and the postoperative protocol between the different study that we have included. And also the sample size is relatively small because even using a meta-analytic approach in the main analysis, we have only 1,036 patients. And for an operation that is as common as coronary artery bypass surgery, I think we definitely need, need confirmation in larger randomized trial. We are leading uh, uh, one of those trials, uh, the a trial that is comparing the uh, uh, long-term clinical consequence of using a single versus multiple arterial grafting for uh, bypass surgery. It is called the ROMA trial, and the results are expected in 2027. So I think uh, uh, the 10-year result of the radial database are a very strong signal in favor of the use of multiple arterial grafting for CAMCH, but we need confirmation in larger trials.